I saved for months to buy him apes 5, but his reaction to a joke made it clear he thought I was just a thought now. I'm reclaiming my self-worth and leaving the disrespect behind. Me, 26-year-old female, dipped into my savings and got Mike, my boyfriend, 27, apes 5 for his birthday yesterday. He knew he was getting the piece 5 because he told me that the piece 5 is the only thing he wants. From the moment the new console was announced, he had been talking about it non-stop. Every conversation seemed to circle back to the piece 5 from the games he was excited to play to the new features he couldn't wait to try out. It was clear that this was more than just a gift, it was a dream come true for him. We've been together for four years, so the cost didn't matter to me. I saved up for months, carefully setting aside money from my paycheck because I wanted to see the look of pure joy on his face when he unwrapped it. That is, until I found out what he thinks about me. Some background. When I was 18, I was involved with Jake, a guy who I met online. Jake was charming, funny, and we instantly clicked. Our online chats quickly turned into late night phone calls and soon after we decided to meet in person. Those three months with Jake were fun and full of excitement, but our relationship fizzled out as quickly as it began. We realized we wanted different things and decided to end things on amicable terms. Shortly after, I moved on with Adam, a guy from work. Adam was different from Jake, more mature, more grounded. We started off as friends, bonding over shared projects and office jokes. One thing led to another, and before I knew it, we were dating. Our relationship was steady and comfortable, and for a while it seemed perfect. But a couple of months into our relationship, I discovered that Jake and Adam were actually really close friends. They had grown up together, shared countless memories, and were practically inseparable. I didn't know Jake long enough to meet his friend group, so I had no idea. The realization hit me hard. I felt guilty, embarrassed, and a bit betrayed by the universe for putting me in such an awkward situation. After finding out, I took some time off dating to reflect and heal. I needed to clear my head and figure out what I wanted in a relationship. It was a confusing period, but it gave me a chance to grow and learn from my past mistakes. Two years later, I met my current boyfriend, Mike meeting Mike felt like a fresh start. He was kind, understanding, and we had an instant connection. I was upfront and honest with Mike about my past and the fact that I was unintentionally involved with friends. He said he understood, and my past didn't bother him. For the first time in a long while, I felt hopeful about a relationship. When I got into a relationship with Mike, I was upfront and honest about my past and the fact that I was unintentionally involved with friends. I remember the conversation vividly. We were sitting in his cozy apartment, the soft glow of the evening light filtering through the windows. My heart was pounding because I knew that this was a make or break moment for us. I didn't want any secrets between us, and I felt that he deserved to know everything. I took a deep breath and told him about Jake and Adam, explaining how I had met Jake online and dated him briefly, only to later find out that Adam, my next boyfriend, was his close friend. I laid it all out there, my voice trembling slightly as I recounted the story. I emphasized that it was never my intention to cause any drama or to hurt anyone. I just wanted him to understand my past and the lessons I had learned from it. Mike listened intently, his expression calm and thoughtful. When I finished, there was a moment of silence that felt like an eternity. Then he reached out and took my hand, giving it a reassuring squeeze. He looked me in the eyes and said, I understand, your past doesn't bother me. We all have things we've been through, and what matters is who we are now and how we treat each other. His words were like a balm to my anxious heart. I felt a wave of relief and gratitude wash over me. In that moment, I believed that Mike was someone who truly accepted me for who I was, flaws and all. It made me feel secure and loved, and it strengthened my resolve to build a future with him. But everything seems to be a lie after what happened last night at his party. The anticipation had been building for weeks. I had carefully planned the surprise imagining the look on Mike's face when he saw the piece 5. I even wrapped it up in his favorite color and added a big shiny bow. When I showed up with the piece 5, Mike and his friends were already in high spirits, the room buzzing with laughter and chatter. As I walked in, I felt a surge of excitement and nervousness. The moment they saw the piece 5, the room erupted. Mike and his friends were screaming with joy, their faces lighting up with sheer delight. Mike's eyes widened and he let out a whoop of excitement rushing over to grab the box from my hands. His friends gathered around, clapping him on the back and cheering. For a brief moment, I felt a sense of accomplishment and happiness. I thought I had made his birthday unforgettable. His best female friend, Jessica, laughed and said, I wish I was a thought so I could afford a piece five too. 
the words hit me like a slap in the face. It felt as if the room suddenly went silent, the laughter and joy from moments ago replaced by a cold biting tension. I looked at her with an, excuse me, look on my face, my mind racing to comprehend what she had just said. My heart pounded and a mix of shock and anger surged through me. Jessica's comment was not just a joke, it was a deliberate, hurtful jab. She stood there with a smug smile, clearly enjoying the discomfort she had caused. The audacity of her words left me speechless for a moment. When I finally found my voice, I managed to ask, what did you just say? My tone was a mix of disbelief and rising anger. Instead of apologizing, Jessica just shrugged and said never mind before turning and walking away as if nothing had happened. Her dismissal was infuriating. It was as if she didn't even see me as a person worthy of respect as if my feelings didn't matter at all. I could feel the eyes of the room on me and the joy that had filled the air just moments ago now felt tainted. I confronted my boyfriend about it, feeling a mix of hurt and anger bubbling up inside me. I pulled him aside, away from the noise and laughter of his friends, and asked, why would Jessica say something like that? He looked at me, his expression casual, almost dismissive, and said, she's just messing with you. You can't take a joke. His response made my blood boil. It was as if he was completely oblivious to the sting of Jessica's words, or worse, he didn't care. A joke, I repeated, my voice shaking with disbelief. Why is she even calling me names to begin with? I pushed further, needing to understand why someone who was supposedly his friend felt comfortable insulting me so casually. He sighed, as if I was being unreasonable, and said, Well, everyone knows you were a thought before you met me. His words were like a punch to the gut. My heart sank as the realization hit me. This wasn't just Jessica's cruel comment, it was something deeper, something he apparently believed too. I asked him to explain how I was a thought before him and he said, you know, messing with best friends? His words cut deep and I felt a lump form in my throat. I had been honest with him about my past, thinking it was something we had moved past together. Hearing him casually throw it back in my face was like reliving that painful chapter all over again. He then patted me on the shoulder, a gesture that felt condescending rather than comforting. It's okay, he continued, as if he was doing me a favor. You're not who you were back then. If I could get over your colorful past and thought mentalities to give you a chance, then you could get over Jessica's comments and give her another chance. His words were a twisted attempt at justification and they made me feel small and unworthy. The way he framed it, as though he had graciously overlooked my supposed flaws, was both patronizing and hurtful. It became painfully clear that he didn't truly respect or value me, despite the facade of understanding he had maintained for years. I didn't say anything. My mind was racing, but I felt strangely calm. Words failed me. There was nothing left to say that could express the betrayal and hurt I was feeling. I just got up, my movements slow and deliberate, as if in a daze. I walked over to the gift table, my eyes fixed on the Peace 5 that had once symbolized my love and effort. The room fell silent as I reached for the Peace 5. Everyone's eyes were on me, but I didn't care. My heart was pounding in my chest, a mix of anger and heartbreak propelling me forward. I picked up the Peace 5, feeling its weight in my hands. It no longer felt like a gift of joy, but a reminder of the disrespect I had just endured. Without looking back, I walked out of the room. The sounds of the party faded behind me, replaced by the thudding of my own footsteps and the rush of blood in my ears. As I stepped outside, the cool night air hit my face, bringing with it a sense of finality. I didn't stop until I reached my car. I placed the Peace 5 on the passenger seat and sat behind the wheel, my hands gripping the steering wheel as I fought back tears. He was pissed. I could almost feel his fury radiating through the phone as it buzzed incessantly in my pocket. He literally called me like 20 times, each call more insistent than the last, but I didn't care. My heart felt with the weight of his betrayal and the harsh words he had spoken. Every time his name flashed on the screen, it was a painful reminder of how little he thought of me. I was so hurt that I couldn't bear to look at the Peace 5 anymore. The thought of it sitting in my apartment, a symbol of a love that felt shattered, was too much to bear. So I took the bow off and drove straight back to the store I got it from. The drive was a blur of angry tears and a knot of determination in my chest. I walked into the store, clutching the Peace 5 like it was a burden I needed to shed. The store clerk greeted me with a polite smile, which faltered slightly when they saw my tear-streaked face. I explained that I needed to return the Peace 5, and they asked no questions. They could probably sense that this wasn't just a simple return. They happily refunded it, and for a moment, I felt a small sense of relief. It wasn't just about getting my money back, it was about reclaiming my dignity and taking a stand against the disrespect I had endured. I thought that was done, but Mike and all his friends, including Jessica, were relentless. My phone kept lighting up with notifications, each message more hurtful than the last. They were berating me for being petty, accusing me of overreacting and ruining Mike's birthday. 
Every time I looked at my phone, I saw a barrage of texts and missed calls, each one a reminder of their collective disdain. Mike's friends, who I had thought were my friends too, were quick to jump to his defense. Jessica was particularly vocal, her messages dripping with condescension. You're so immature, she wrote. All this over a joke. Grow up. The others chimed in, echoing her sentiments, making me feel like I was the villain in the story. They kept saying I brought this on myself by making poor choices. If you hadn't messed around with Jake and Adam, none of this would have happened. One message read. Another said. You knew what you were getting into with Mike, you should have known better. Each accusation felt like a dagger, twisting the knife of guilt and shame. Their words stung because they weren't just defending Mike, they were attacking my character, making me feel like my past defined me. It was as if all the progress I had made, all the growth and self-reflection meant nothing. They made it clear that in their eyes, I was still that girl who made mistakes unworthy of respect or understanding. I responded to Mike, my fingers trembling as I typed out the message. The hurt and anger swirled within me, but I was determined to stand my ground. I told him that he deserves better than me, my words laced with sarcasm and bitterness. Find someone who wasn't a thought and get the peace five from them, because I returned it. I wrote, hitting send before I could second guess myself. There was a moment of silence, a pause in the barrage of notifications, as if he was taken aback by my response. I imagined him reading my message, his face contorting with frustration and disbelief. I knew my words would sting, but I wanted him to understand just how deeply he had hurt me. His reply came quickly, a flurry of angry texts accusing me of being petty and vindictive. You're the biggest AA for returning it, he wrote, his anger palpable even through the screen. You should be happy I ignored your colorful past. Each message was a slap in the face, a reminder of how little he valued my feelings and how he twisted the narrative to make me the villain. But I didn't care. I felt a strange sense of liberation in standing up for myself, in reclaiming a small piece of my dignity. Returning the piece 5 wasn't just an act of defiance, it was a declaration that I wouldn't be defined by his or anyone else's judgment. It was my way of saying that I deserved better, even if he didn't believe it. Mike's friends didn't let up. For weeks they went on and on and on berating me, their messages flooding my phone day and night. Jessica especially seemed to take a perverse pleasure in hounding me. You think you're so much better than us, she would taunt. You're just a coward who couldn't handle a little joke. The constant barrage of negativity was exhausting, but I refused to let them break me. Mike wasn't any better. He continued to call and text, alternating between anger and pleading. I'm sorry, okay? Just come back and we'll talk. He would say in one breath, only to follow it up with, you're acting like a child. Grow up and stop being so dramatic. His attempts to manipulate my emotions only strengthened my resolve. Finally, I knew I had to end things with Mike once and for all. I called him my voice steady despite the storm of emotions raging inside me. Mike, this isn't working, I said firmly. I'm done with you and your friends. Don't contact me again. He tried to interrupt, but I continued. If you keep harassing me, I'll call the police. This needs to stop. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. When he finally spoke, his voice was cold and bitter. Fine, do whatever you want, he snapped before hanging up. The days that followed were a whirlwind of emotions, but slowly I began to feel a sense of relief. The constant dread I had felt for weeks began to lift, replaced by a growing sense of peace. I realized that by standing up for myself, I had taken the first step towards reclaiming my self-worth. Life started to get better. I surrounded myself with friends who truly cared about me, people who valued and respected me for who I was. I focused on my work, my hobbies, and the things that brought me joy. The money I got back from the Peace 5 refund became a small celebration fund. I treated myself to a spa day and bought a new book one had been eyeing for months. In time, I came to see the breakup as a blessing in disguise. I had dodged a bullet and I was grateful for the chance to start anew. The experience had taught me the importance of self-respect and the value of being with someone who truly appreciated me. I knew now that I deserved better and I was determined never to settle for anything less. From this whole ordeal, I've learned a lot and I want to share these lessons with you all. First and foremost, I've learned the importance of self-worth and boundaries. It's crucial to recognize your own value and not let anyone diminish it. Setting and enforcing boundaries is essential for maintaining your self-respect and emotional well-being. I realized I deserved to be treated with respect and it's okay to demand that. Honesty and transparency are vital in any relationship, but they must be met with mutual respect and understanding. If someone uses your honesty against you, it's a huge red flag. Trust and respect are the foundations of a healthy relationship. If a partner or their friends make you feel belittled or disrespected, it's a sign that the relationship might not be as healthy or supportive as it should be. 
Standing up for yourself is another big lesson. It's important to assert your boundaries and take action when you're being mistreated. Whether it's through direct confrontation or seeking external help, standing up for yourself is necessary for your own mental and emotional health. It might be tough, but it's absolutely worth it. I also learned the value of having a strong support system. Surrounding yourself with friends and loved ones who genuinely care about you provide strength and support during difficult times. They can help remind you of your worth and what you truly deserve. Going through this experience has shown me that growth often comes from adversity. Difficult experiences can teach you a lot about what you truly want and deserve in life and relationships. They can help you make better choices in the future and become a stronger person. Lastly, it's crucial to listen to red flags in a relationship. Disrespect, manipulation, and belittlement are signs that shouldn't be ignored. Taking them seriously is crucial for your well-being. I hope my story helps you understand the importance of these lessons. And remember, you deserve to be treated with respect and love. I don't settle for anything less. Some of the wholesome comments on the story comment one, I'm so confused but maybe that's because I'm an old lady who got married around the time you were in kindergarten. Hey, if anyone was wrong in the Jake Shed Adam incident, it was. Adam, you might have dated friends, but he dated his best friend's ex. That's on them to figure out. And Adam's mistake only. Be where I come from, dating three dudes in seven years does not have a colorful past. Did Ho get a new definition since the early 2000s? And I hope you do something special for yourself with a little of that money you got back from returning that gift you got your ex comment to. 55-year-old lady here. What went down in your colorful past wouldn't even be a bleep on anyone's radar when I was the OP's age. Your BF screwed up and accidentally showed you exactly what he really thinks about you. You have dodged a bullet. And please note he's upset because his screw up has cost him a piece five. He's not concerned about you or your feelings. Take that refund and go treat yourself. Comment three. I am so glad there is no photographic evidence of some of the shit we got into when I was in my teens and 20s back in the 70s and early 80s. Oh, the color and the parties and the these young kids have no idea what grandma got up to back in the day. Comment 4. I like how you stood up for yourself and did not take any crap. You went in to find out what was happening and got an answer. The way he started screaming and giving you the you should be grateful just confirms that you dodged a massive bullet and makes me worry a bit over what else he has been saying to you, not only in this story. That isn't someone who loves you. That is someone using you for his own benefit. And secondly, it's a red flag he told his friends about what you told him and that she felt so comfortable to use it as an insult. This shows me two people who don't respect you as a person. Please consider this relationship, to put it politely, these people still have a lot of growing to do and I think you should allow them to do it on their own. In your opinion, what do you think about this story? Please leave your comment below to let me know.